And that's another topic we have to deal with um, when uh, studying conduction. So in this lecture, we are going to cover how affin works and the main um, heat transfer mechanisms we need to evaluate when dealing with fins that are extended surfaces, right? And we are going to evaluate uh, longitudinal fins. That is one of the typical geometries of extended surfaces. And uh, finally, we are going to define what is the fin efficiency. That is a way we can do or we, we employ to calculate the heat transfer through the fin efficiency. So there are, those are the main topics. Um, so first of all, uh, it is convenient to define at this point what is a fin and why we use fins. So a fin is a surface that is extended from an object to increase the rate of heat transfer to or from the environment by increasing convection. Okay, so we are trying to increase convection by extend the surface of our object. Um, typically, we um, make fins of a highly conductive material. So metals are the preferred material to make fins, okay? Um, since we are saying that we want to increase the rate of heat transfer to or from the environment by convection, then we are going to use Newton's cooling law, right, to describe this phenomena because we already established that that is the kind um, of, of equation that help us to describe convection. So Newton's cooling law, just to recall here, convective heat transfer coefficients times the surface area, right, the area that is in contact with the fluid times delta T that is hot minus cold at all times to ensure a positive heat transfer rate. So then if we look at Newton's cooling law, we have several options for increased heat transfer, right? And the first one would be increasing delta T, second one increasing the convective heat transfer coefficient, and the third one increasing the surface area of the area exposed to convection, right? Um, however, the first two are usually not economical or not feasible. Right? Why? Because when you reach a place, um, you already have an established maybe process, right? So changing the delta T is going to be right a travel because you will have currents of a fluid coming at a certain temperature, and you cannot just switch or change the whole process to adjust to your to your new change. Uh, Increasing the convective heat transfer coefficient, again, imposes a problem because that depends heavily on fluid mechanics properties, right? Like the Reynolds, and also depends on the geometry, right? So it's kind of very difficult and costly to do all those changes. So the most economical or feasible way to increase the heat transfer is by modifying the area. And that means adding extended surfaces or adding fins. So um, in this course, we are going to evaluate three main types of fins. The longitudinal fin, that is nothing more than a flat plate, like you can see here in this image. The pin fin, that is a rod of circular or a square or rectangular cross section. It's a rod, okay, extending from the base. And the radial fin fin that is an annular disc is this part, the part that is kind of pinkish here in this image. So those are the main common and simple geometries of fins, right? Uh, obviously the geometry depends on the designer. Nowadays there are very uh, kind of different and more complicated geometries, but these are the basic ones we are going to study for the purpose of this um, course. So how exactly these extended surfaces work? Okay, so you can have here an electronic device in the face, in the in the base, sorry, or a heat source that imparts thermal energy to the base of the fin. So the energy is going to be dispersed to the surroundings by convection, right? But also we will have energy flowing through the fin, through the solid by conduction. So we will have the two heat transfer phenomena happening in the extended surface, right? So 
if we uh, consider an insulated tip, we, we typically disregard the tip. Why? Because also it is a very small area compared to the whole extended surface geometry. So we will have a temperature profile along the fin that looks like the figure to your right, right? The base is hot because it's the one that is receiving, right, the heat from the electronic device, right? And as we move towards the tip, the temperature is going to increase tending to the surrounding temperature, right? So in a fin, convection, conduction, both happening, right? And we employ a fin to disperse or reduce the temperature from the base to the tip, right? So these are real world fins. We can find them in car radiators, in electronic devices, in air cool aircraft or motorcycle engines, right? Because they help us, right, to reduce the temperature from the contact base, right, to the surroundings. So let's look at the formulations to evaluate a longitudinal fin. So, in this case, as we have been working in this course, we need to focus on the geometry first, right? So the fin cross-sectional area through conduction of course, or where conduction of course is L times T, right? The length times the thickness, where T is the thickness, here I mark it. And the perimeter is 2L. Then, if we apply a heat balance on differential elements, we have this top equation. We define the temperature in terms of the dimensionless temperature theta. So we rewrite our equation like this, like the bottom equation we have in here. Then, as always, um, we apply boundary conditions, okay? And we are going to consider that the fin base is constant because the fin is insulated at the tip. Okay, so after applying the boundary conditions, we have this particular solution, uh, where theta S is the difference of the surface temperature man minus the surrounding temperature. And M is the fin parameter that is the square root of two times the convective heat transfer coefficient divided by KT or the thermal conductivity times the thickness. So the question I want that you please take note is this one. This is the relationship after working with all the boundary conditions and the initial equation that is going to help us to calculate the heat transfer from the fin, okay? So heat transfer from the fin is given by this equation, so please take note. This is the equation that you need to have in your notes. So it's the square root of convective heat transfer coefficient times the perimeter times the thermal conductivity times the area times theta S, where theta S is the difference of the surface minus the surrounding temperatures tangent hyperbolic. This is an hyperbolic tangent, okay? Be careful when you use that in your calculator. Check that you can get the tangent hyperbolic, okay? Um, because that's a very common mistake. Um, times the fin, peri the fin parameter. What is the fin parameter? Well, it's M and is the square root of two times the convective heat transfer coefficient divided by thermal conductivity times, term by times the thickness of the fin. And um, L, this L is the fin height. Okay, so these are the equations you need to have handy for evaluating the heat transfer from the fin. Efficiency, that is an alternative method to find the heat transfer from the fin. Uh, because if you have the efficiency, you can find the actual heat transfer, right? Uh, because if you remember, uh, fin efficiency is nothing more than the actual divided by the ideal, right? So it would be the actual heat transfer divided by the heat that would be transferred if the entire fin were at the base temperature T naught, the ideal case. So if your base is at 80, I mean, the ideal case would be that everything all the way down the fin, it, it remains the same temperature, right? However, the actual, it is not like that. Why? Because we are losing heat, right? 
through convection, right, through the environment, right? You, I mean, uh, it ha com convection is happening, right? And we are having heat transfer between the fin and the surroundings, right? And th that actually is the, is the main objective of the fin, right? We put it in our electronics to cool down the electronics, right? So if we have an insulated tip, like we have been doing this regarding this very small area, the tip, um, and we can regret also this N or efficiency in terms of the fin parameter, okay? So tangent hyperbolic of ML, the fin parameter times L divided by ML. And uh, as you can see, very simple, we just have everything in terms of the fin uh, parameter. That's an alternative case. Uh, we are going to solve right now that problem with the previous equation, the heat transfer from the fin. Um, so let's solve the longitudinal fin. First example, we have the length and the thickness of a longitudinal fin of aluminum 6061 being 50 centimeters and two millimeters respectively. Length 15 centimeters, thickness 2 millimeters. If the fin base is maintained at a temperature of 55 Celsius, that is our TS, and the surrounding air temperature, that is T infinity, is 20 Celsius, where the heat transfer coefficient, or our H, is 34 watts meter square Kelvin, determine the heat transfer from the fin. The thermal conductivity of aluminum 6061 is 180 watt meter Kelvin. So we need to use the equation I gave you in the previous slide, right? The equation that you have in your textbook, page 118. Um, so heat transfer from the fin equals the square root or convective heat transfer coefficient times the perimeter times thermal conductivity times the area. Multiply it by theta s tangent hyperbolic of ml or the fin parameter. So it's nothing more than applying that equation. Uh, the way I solve these problems typically, I calculate the step by step. First the perimeter, then the area, then the, the uh, fin parameter m, and then I put everything in the equation. It's up to you if you want to do it, uh, put all the numbers in the equation. Um, typically, I do it a step by step in case I made a mistake. In so, as you can see in my solution, I do step by step again. Uh, if you feel comfortable, just put everything here in the heat transfer from the fin equation. Uh, I do it a step by step in order to check if I did any miscalculation. So, the fin perimeter is 2 times L, right? The length. So my perimeter is 0.3 meters. Cross-sectional area, LT, uh, 0.15 times 0 0.002 meters equals 3 times minus 4 um, meters square. The theta S, or the base to fluid temperature difference, hot minus cold, 55 minus 20, 30. Kelvin. Then I calculate the parameter of the fin to H over KT, two times convective heat transfer coefficient that is given, the thermal conductivity of the material times the thickness gives me 13.7 meters minus one. Then I multiply that by L because I need the product ML to put here in my tangent hyperbolic and I got 2.055. Then uh, I have every parameter evaluated to put into the heat transfer from the fin equation, right? And it's what I do here. Uh, please uh, put this equation in your calculator and check that you get um, more or less the same number I'm having here, okay? Uh, because it is important that you check now that you can get the tangent hyperbolic properly, okay? Because sometimes you just put, uh, I don't know the inverse of the tangent or something different. And if you don't use tangent hyperbolic there, your key transfer value is going to be different from mine. 
And so we said that there are two other geometries um, that we are going to cover, and those were pin fins and radial fins. Uh, also, if times allow, we are going to check a parameter, the effectiveness of the fin that help us to determine if it is good or is beneficial to use a fin or not in conduction shape factor. Uh, that is time allowed. If not, we start with those topics next lecture. So again, for the pin fin, uh, we said that it's a road, right, extending from the base. Um, again, the differential equation is the same one as in the case of the longitudinal fin. The only difference between the longitudinal and pin fin are the formulas that we are going to employ for the pin Peri fin perimeter and the cross-sectional area. The area in this case is going to be pi d square over four and the perimeter pi d. So again, this is the only change with respect to the longitudinal fin. The formulas that we are going to employ for the perimeter and the cross-sectional area. Again, area pi d square over four and perimeter pi d. So there's not much complication with the pin fin. The parameter of the fin is the same and the heat transfer equation is the same. Again, what is going to change? Only the cross-sectional area formula that you have here on top and the perimeter pi d. So these equations, you already have them from the longitudinal fin. The only ones you need to um, please take note at this point are the area, right, pi d squared over four for the pin fin and the perimeter pi d. The parameter of the fin equation remains the, the same and um, the heat transfer remains the same. It's only the geometry that is changing, right? So then this pin fin. Again, the only thing is going to change now is the perimeter and area equations. We have a 0.14 inch diameter pin fin that is going to transfer 0.5 BTU hour to atmospheric air that is surrounding temperature, right, 75, where the heat transfer coefficient or the H is 2 BTU hour feet square ranking. The fin base temperature that is our TS, right, is maintained at 1 85 Fahrenheit. The thermal conductivity of the red brass or the K value equals 35.2 BTU hour feet ranking. If the fin is made of red brass, what is the height required? So in this case, we want to know the height. We have even the heat transfer um, through the fin. We need to know the height. We need to get that L, right? out of the equations. We have everything, again, we have this equation. What we want to know, this L. What is the height of that fin? What is the length of that fin, right? We want to know that. So we want to know this L out of the equation. So you have the data there, just get the L out of the equation for a heat transfer of 0.5 BTU hours. You have everything in there again. So again, how I solved that, um, I did uh, the area and perimeter calculations first and the parameter of the fin, the difference of fin to base fluid temperature. And after that, I put everything together in the heat transfer equation, solve it for the fin height. Um, so feel free to put everything together here in this equation if you feel more comfortable. I typically do calculations uh, before uh, putting numbers into my equation. So at the end, um, I got that I need uh, 0.72 inches if, if I want that this pin fin uh, transfer, how much was that? 0.5 BTUs per hour. Let's look at the third type of the fins, and that is the radial fin for this course. Um, so the radial fin, um, as you can see, unlike the longitudinal and the pin fin, the cross-sectional for the radial fin is not constant and increases with radius, right? So if you can see, we are evaluating this. This road is our base, right? And this disc is our radial fin. So 
obviously we are changing here, right, the geometry as we move from the inner to the outer radius, right? So then the governing equation is this differential equation where theta is uh, defined now at, as the temperature at the point R at certain radius you want to locate and uh, minus the temperature of the surroundings or T infinity. Uh, the solution for this equation requires Bessel functions, which it is out of the scope of this course, okay? Uh, in that case, we are going to use a graphical method, okay, to avoid the use of the Bessel functions. And uh, then in order to solve, we are going to use the efficiency method. And um, you have the efficiency for radial fins in figure 2.22 in your textbook. So we are going to use this plot to solve for uh, this kind of radial fins, right? Um, so have marked this, um, this um, plot, uh, very important, uh, if you see what is, uh, how to use this plot, well, essentially, we need to calculate the x-axis, right? The x-axis is defined by this equation that you have in here, right? That depends on the thickness, the inner, outer radius, the k, the h, etc. So we need to calculate all these parameters to locate here where we are in the x-axis. We need to calculate this r naught plus plus thickness over two divided by Ri, right? Uh, in order to locate which line we are going to read and finally get the efficiency, right? And the efficiency is going to be actual divided by maximum, right? Or the ideal one. So we can get the actual out of the efficiency like we already discussed it in the previous slides. So that's the main method. And we are going to go through this example. And you have this example in your textbook. So we have uh, that to increase the heat dissipation from a 2.5 centimeter outer diameter tube, circumferential fins are made of aluminum with a K value of 200 are soldered to the outer surface, like you can see here. Uh, the fins are 0.1 centimeter thick, that's the thickness here is marked in the drawing here, and an outer diameter of 5.5 centimeter as shown in the figure below. If the tube surface temperature, the surface temperature is 100 and the sur surroundings or environmental temperature is 25, and the heat transfer coefficient between the fin and the environment is 65, calculate the heat loss from a fin or from the fin. Um, then uh, you have this example in your textbook, okay? If you don't, uh, if you want to look for it in the book, uh, that's fine. I don't remember at this point which number of example uh, is example 2.7 in your book. So we are going to use the fin efficiency curve. Why? Because we are dealing with a radial, radial fin, right? Uh, so then we are using figure 222. So we are going to calculate the value of the x-axis, like I already explained it. We need to know the value of the x-axis and which curve we are going to read. So the x-axis is defined by R naught plus T over two minus R I uh, three, three, um, three over two. So um, we know here that uh, if you check in the figure, R naught is 5.5. So we want to know the radius, right? We have the 5.5 diameter, but again, our equation to find the x-axis is in terms of radius, so we divide it by two, right? Plus the thickness, that is 0.1, uh, divided by two minus Ri, that also you can see in the figure, is 2.5, but we divide it by two, sorry about that, 2.5 divided by two, right? So it's here, and I divide by 100 in order to change to meters. Um, we also need this value for the x-axis, so I'm going to calculate it separately. If we multiply this one by this one, we have finally 0.4 to read the x-axis. So very long equation just to get that. Um, so we need to uh, calculate also the R naught plus T over two divided by Ri to locate which curve we are going to read in figure 2.2. 
So after doing that calculation, again, be careful with the meters conversion, we get 2.24. So let's go to figure 2.22 to get the efficiency with these two values. We calculate, right? And for the x-axis, doing this whole thing, a value of 0.42, right? And uh, to choose the line, we got uh, for the line 2.24. So 2.24 would be between 2 and 3. So a little bit going to the 3 here. So I'll go to the y-axis and I get 91% efficiency, right? I got efficiency, so I can get the heat loss, uh, the rate of heat loss by convection. Uh, I know that the efficiency of the fin is going to be the actual divided by the theoretical that is going to be given by Newton's cooling law. H, area of the fin, delta T, hot minus cold, right? All of this is going to give me my theoretical divided by actual. And I want to know the actual. So uh, your textbook give us this formula to get that area of the fin. Also, for simplicity, you just can do the area of the big cylinder minus the area of the small, and you will get the same thing, um, or similar numbers. So that gives us a value, finally, of actual, so 0.91, that it was efficiency, times Newton's cooling law, give us an actual rate of heat loss by convection from the fin of 17.5 watts. So, here to solve for radial fins, the main complication might be to read the plot, the figure. That's it. You need to get the x-axis value and you need to get the value uh, to choose the line you are reading, right? Then once you have the efficiency, right, with Newton's cooling law, you have the theoretical one, you can get the actual. That's it.